Im Namen des Vaters und des Sohnes und des Heiligen Geistes. Amen. Gelobt zu Jesus Christus in Ewigkeit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, dear faithful in Christ, today we celebrate the Passion Sunday. With this Sunday we enter in, a, in the inner circle of the Lenten season. These two weeks are specifically uh, meant to meditate upon the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we truly understand and realize the, the importance of His suffering and in this also to prepare our souls to unite properly to Jesus Christ, to God. We know Jesus Christ, he is the second person of the Holy Trinity. And as we read in the uh, epistle, when St. Paul uh, writes to the Hebrews, he declares and explains to them that all the sacrifices you did so far, that means all the sacrifices of the Old Testament, you did it because it was ordered uh, by God through the prophets. And it was good that you did it and uh, God liked it. But you must know this is a prefiguration to keep in mind to the chosen people that the final redemption will be a bloody redemption, but it will be the blood of someone who has an eternal value. And therefore, describes St. Paul, it is possible only by Jesus Christ, who is not only a human person, but he is also God at the same time. And as such, he, all his actions, has eternal value as he himself is eternal. And we must unite to this eternal uh, satisfaction through Jesus Christ to unite ourselves to uh, achieve forgiveness also for our sins. Secondly, in these two weeks we are reminded of the baptism. In the early church the catechumens were prepared for a long period and then were baptized on uh, Saturday, on Holy Saturday. So there, these days there were the last preparations before let them enter in into the society of the church, into the mystical body of Jesus Christ. And we are exhorted to contemplate and when we pray, when we meditate up on the, uh, via, on the, on the Via Crucis, on the crossway, when we contemplate the sixth uh, station, when uh, Saint Victoria, Saint, Saint, uh, Saint, Saint Victoria uh, gives to our Lord uh, a towel uh, to, to cleanse his face. He 
leaves impressed the image of his sacred face. And with this station we are exhorted that we must repair all kind of disfiguration of the image of Jesus Christ in our soul which was impressed uh, at the point of the baptism. And so we have to cleanse our soul from all stain of sin and all inclination towards evil, towards earthly things. And we must elevate our soul to God. And thirdly, this period until uh, Easter was also used then to pray and to reconcile at the end the public sinners. What a what a uh, society must it have been where public sinners publicly uh, uh, did penitence and were then publicly re-accepted in the church. What a sad society we have to, to, to wish also for our time. We should wish to be in a society. We must do it at least for ourselves, for our small communities, to really bend our sins and to really be reconciled with the church professing the faith perfectly as it was taught uh, by the Holy Church through all the centuries. And in this period also the, in the early church or in Christian time, let's say it like this, even the high authorities, the kings and all the others of authority, they were prostrating for themselves before the cross, carrying the cross in the public recitation of the crossway and showing, yes, we are your authorities, but also we have to uh, listen to a higher authority. Also we are sinners. We don't have the, the truth for us. We get it from somewhere. What a beautiful society must it be where from, from the uh, pure, humble until the most high leading authorities, everyone, everyone uh, has this uh, perception of authority and submission. And we want to enter in the, in the crossway, the holy crossway, to realize also the immense love of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ for us. And when we consider the eighth station of the uh, Via Crucis, we hear that Jesus Christ tells to the crying woman, do not cry upon myself, upon, upon me, but upon yourself and your sons. And when we hear this, it's not meant that Jesus Christ uh, rejects their, their compassion and their, uh, their tears. It's much more that he wants to explain them. Watch, think what is happening at the moment with me. This is much greater than it's just what you see exteriorly, me suffering. You can see me, I, on, up on me is uh, applied the justice of God up on the sin. What is it if 
the justice of God is applied upon the sin of someone who is the living tree, who is the principle of, of, live, of life, how will it be on the death tree, on the dried tree? Look, watch out that your sins will be cleansed in mine, because otherwise you will be uh, tortured, you will be uh, thrown before the justice of God and we, you will not withstand it and you will fall eternity, suffer a, uh, eternal pains. And the whole the entire Via Crucis is an unique invitation to us unite to my suffering. Now is the time of suffering, now is the time of penance. Do it also. I invite you, I show you with my whole love that I do it with you, I do it for you, but I want your participation. We are not like Luther who said uh, recognize the sin and uh, uh, increase the hope and sin more to say you are always pardoned whatever you do because Christ already suffered everything for us. We don't cannot uh, add anything to it. But it's not true. Jesus Christ, God, he, he wants explicitly our participation on this suffering, on this restoration of our soul, of the state of our soul. And therefore, we have to be very severe and we have to show gra uh, great fidelity to Jesus Christ even in the suffering, especially in the suffering. And yes, we want we want to loosen the hardness of our hearts and we want not like the Pharisees and the scribes at the time of Jesus Christ who hardened their hearts and it was not possible anymore because they already rejected any kind of truth. So they were, they were uh, in, in, a, in an ostination which took the measure that they could not even listen and see Jesus Christ, the truth. And they were completely, completely blinded and could not anymore accept him. And this why, that's why they also wanted to stone him. But he hid it because he knew the time is not ready yet. And his hiding of our Lord before the scribes and the Pharisees, Pharisees uh, is described by the uh, church fathers is symbolism for the hiding uh, of Adam and Eve after the original sin. Not as Jesus Christ would be a sinner, but as much as he took all the sins of human mankind upon himself. And therefore we want to recognize and we want to thank our Lord because as we saw in the Gospel, Jesus Christ, He, in His perfect pedagogic uh, knowledge, He tried until the last moment to, con to convince the Pharisees, the scribes, the people that you don't uh, can uh, uh, you cannot uh, accuse me any sin. Everything I did was good. 
How can it be that I, who did nothing wrong, nothing bad, how can I be from the devil? And here comes in the, the sin against the Holy Spirit, the sin against the obvious, because they saw, they must have realized, even if they did not realize by his person that he is God, by his facts, they were obvious, they could not deny in no way the, the godliness, the, the godly origin of our Lord. And here comes where it says, the sins, the sin because you do not accept me as God, might be pardoned. But the fact that you sin against the Holy Ghost, this I cannot pardon. And this is also the reason why at the end the people, the sinner who sins against the Holy Ghost, who sins against, who rejects the obvious, that he is able to do the, the worst things. And the worst things, I mean with this, they did the most horrible thing, the crucifixion of the God. This is what is able of a, be of a person, of people who are uh, who rejecting uh, the Holy Ghost, who rejecting the obvious, because then it's an easy to, to sin by lying and it, in the end everything the Pharisees describes the Jews uh, uh, accused Jesus Christ, they knew that all those are lies. But they were ostinated and could not anymore open, loose in their hearts. They did not want anymore. And we must be careful that we do not enter into this way of thinking, that we do not reject the obvious, that we accept the obvious, that we accept Jesus Christ as the divine redeemer, that we reject the that we that we not reject the Holy Mother the Church as founded by Jesus Christ. We must accept Holy Mother Church, the true Holy Mother Church in his absolute perfectness uh, as a mirror image of the, of, of the perfectness of God. We must accept and realize the perfectness of uh, the Holy Mother the Church and must be able to find the Holy Mother the Church and as such adhere to it. And with this, my dear faithful, I want to conclude and I want to give the last exhortation that we unite to the sufferings of Jesus Christ, that we will really detest the sins in the way uh, Jesus Christ did it, that we have contrition, perfect contrition. We took the example when the child uh, has contrition because he has not any more the, the playing tool because the parents took it. It's an imperfect contrition. If the child instead also have, has contrition because, and most of all because it offended the parents by disobeying, then the contrition is perfect. Let us also have this perfect contrition and let us unite with Jesus Christ, let us unite with our Blessed Lady of Sorrows that we really enter in the suffering of Jesus Christ and then be crucified, to crucify our old Adam and to be restored in Jesus Christ for all eternity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, praise be Jesus and Mary,